Well, it's one of those weeks. You're all used to them by now, or at least you should be. Wendell is, uh, he's dealing with some, some stuff in his life this week. You should all uh, comment F in the comment section to pay respects to what Wendell is dealing with. I mean, I'm not going to go into it because it's his private life, but he's having a tough time. I would, uh, I'd pour some out for him. There's a nice rug under me. I don't want to ruin it. Krista is apparently going to another wedding. Honestly, at this point, I don't know that I believe the weddings are actually happening. And this is like the sixth one. I think she's probably in her basement with uh, Lord of the Rings action figures and delivery drivers that she's chloroformed. And she's reenacting weddings from the Silmarillion at this point. You know? And if the Jimmy Jones driver gets one of his lines wrong, she cuts him with an exacto knife. But be that as it may, they're not here. So I'm half a bottle of Santa Margarita Pinot Grigio deep. I went with a white wine this week. I thought that paired better with this news, you know? Plus, it's a white wine. I'm drinking it straight from the bottle because I'm a straight white male. The most dangerous thing in the universe. Remember that. So, drink along if you've got it. Let's talk about some government and security news. Now, there's a new trend in the news that I've, liked, I've been experimenting with, which is front-loading the good news. I'm going to follow that trend this week. And we'll start out with feds expanding security researchers' ability to hack without going to jail. Now, this relates to the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. The Digital Millennium Copyright Act actually prevents people from figuring out security problems with copyright material. Because in the act of breaking the security, you're breaking a law. That's a little bit of a problem. So the government has actually taken some steps to open that up. Just a little bit. Just a tiny, tiny hole that they've opened up. To let security researchers get in there, find the problems, report them to the rest of us, and not be sued into oblivion or go to jail. Now, it's not, it's not what we need, but it's a step in the right direction, and it is a rare step in the right direction. Very rare that they give a freedom back. So, good on them. I'm going to take the rarest of all drinks, the pro-government drink. Not really. Mm. Let me tell you, I like the white wine a lot better. I complain about wine, even though it is my favorite alcohol. I don't like alcohol very much. This tastes, uh, imagine that you got a Sprite or a 7-Up, and you drank half of it. And then you took that half-filled bottle of Sprite and some of your saliva, and you put it in the trunk of your car, and you left it for an entire summer, and at the end of the summer, you popped it out and you drank it. That's what this tastes like. Huge improvement over the red, let me tell you. So, I'm, I'm enjoying this a lot more today. Another thing that I'm enjoying is the bill that Senator Ron Wyden has introduced that would send CEOs to jail for violating consumer privacy. How's this for a headline? Imagine this new future. Mark Zuckerberg doing 2 to 10 in Sing Sing. I don't know if Sing Sing's still in prison, but how great would that be? Uh, Equifax, you know, all these people that you want to see go to jail, nothing happens to them. Senator Wyden says, let's put this through, Consumer Data Protection Act. Now, I'm going to take a drink, and this is going to be, I'm going to call this the pipe dream drink, because this is never going to pass, never in a million years. The entire tech industry, all the big media companies, everybody will fight against this and they will win. But whatever, you know, you take a shot, you can't hurt anything, right? And in a follow up to last week, now we reported that uh, Tesla, in addition to the funding secured tweet, some people, some serious people were also looking into Mr. Musk's tweets about production. And they weren't quite convinced that the numbers he was tweeting were accurate. And that would be a problem 
as it is a publicly traded company, and he was causing trades based on his tweets. A lot of really helpful Tesla sycophants pointed out in the comments last week, that's not true, that's a rumor, he denied it. Yeah, he did deny it, but the uh, regulatory filing that Tesla just filed confirmed it. That's weird. It's almost like they say one thing to the public where they know they can't be held accountable and another thing to the regulatory agencies. Hmm. So it turns out they are looking into that and we'll see what happens. Honestly, I don't think anything's going to happen. I think Tesla has weathered the storm, you know? I mean, I'm, I'm not anti-Tesla. I just don't like to buy into their bullshit completely. But uh, I think Tesla's good. I think they've done it. You know, they've, they've started turning a profit. Unless they really cooked those books magically that last quarter, I think they might have... They, they'll have a good run until everybody else starts making electric cars. But by that time, maybe they'll be established. Who knows? I'm not giving trading advice, I'll tell you that. Let me just give you that disclaimer right now. Because I, I don't want the SEC looking into me. Because we have such a large audience. <laughs> ah, well, the FCC, we always have to talk about the FCC. They're in the news every week. Because everybody loves them. And this week they're saying, we need a national mission to fix the rural broadband. Now let me tell you, I'm in the process of closing on a house. And it took me more than a year to find a home that I liked that was decently secluded because I don't like other people. I want to be kind of by myself. Uh, but did have cable internet, you know, the best that we can get around here at least, which is not incredible. And uh, it took a long time to find that. Uh, I'm in the process of trying to get them to fix the things that are wrong with it. There are wasps in the fireplace. You don't want wasps in your fireplace, let me tell you. I'll take a drink. This is a wasps in the fireplace drink. Oh, that expired Sprite flavor is amazing. So this is uh, a Jeep pie and Jessica Rosenworcel, which I love that name. That's a fantastic name, Rosenworcel. Uh, they are partisan. That's a Democrat and a Republican. Oh, not respectively. Pie is the Republican. Rosenworcel is the Democrat. But they've set aside their differences and they've come to the agreement, we need a national mission to fix the broadband. It's the wireless map is wrong. The rural people, they just don't have connectivity and there's something we need to, we need to do something about it. And they liken it to the 1930s when we rolled out electricity to everybody. Everybody got electricity. They're saying we need a national movement to do that. So it shows that the FCC is really committed to getting rural broadband. And that's good to see. They would never do anything to work against rural areas getting broadband. Oh, what's this headline? FCC falsely claims that community broadband is an ominous, ominous threat to the First Amendment. Ominous? I'm feeling it. I pregame quite a bit today because I feel like you guys enjoy it more the further, the deeper I go. So I figured, why waste time? Why don't I just go get like half a bottle to eat before we start and then finish it off like at the beginning of the third episode so I can just coast. So yeah, uh, the FCC came out and they talked, you know, there's a lot of these community broadband initiatives where they're like, the FCC has failed us. The industry has failed us. We're going to make our own broadband and it's going to be great. And it usually is. People usually tend to like it. And it's usually some of the highest rated broadband that there is. They have great speeds. They have great prices. But the FCC thing, it's a threat to the First Amendment because these local communities might censor speech. Hmm. As if the big tech companies aren't already censoring speech. <laughs> I mean, come on. They're doing a lot of that. So it kind of uh, makes that last story ring a little hollow, considering that could be a great answer. Community broadband could be a great answer to the missing rural service wouldn't cost the big providers a dime, except lost uh, opportunity dollars, which they want. They want it all. Well, you know what? It's a bad situation in the FCC, but damn it, we're the best country in the world, right? We're number one. And when it comes to freedom, we're unparalleled. Oh, except we're not. In the freedom rankings, Internet freedom, that is. 
we've lost a point. We've gone from 22 to 21. Now, that's not 22nd place. That is an overall score. Our overall score has declined a point. And we are in the top 10, but we're not number one. And you'd think, you know, land of the free, home of the brave, might be number one. No, not. Estonia and Iceland got us beat. And listen, if Iceland has beaten you in any metric, it's time to rethink it, man. Iceland? Jesus. But we are well ahead of one nation, and that's China. And we are having our problems with China, I'll tell you. And it's not just about internet freedom. It's about stealing secrets. Oh, for strong button. Oh, look at that. China... Well, the U.S. has accused China and Taiwan, which is not the same thing, even though China will tell you that it is, for stealing secrets from Micron. Ah, very serious. So this stems from the fact that we fabricate all of our stuff in China. Well, you send over the plans to get it fabricated, and they might, uh, they might lift those designs and use them for their own. Let's take a drink for uh, Chinese pragmatism. I mean, it's a little underhanded, but come on. You don't, you don't expect that? Come on. The U.S. is pissed about it, and they're upset. And they're so upset that uh, they're actually going to ban exports to the Chinese DRAM maker that they accuse of stealing these secrets. Now, let's see. What's the name of it down here? Let me scroll on down. Uh, it's like, uh, I hear though, the Fujian Jinhua Integrated Circuit Company, or FIJIC, if you want to make an acronym out of that. And FIJIC is accused of taking these secrets, making their own DRAM, and we are not having it. So, no more, no more exporting to that company. And uh, this is just a escal more escalation in the old Chinese trade war. Now, we could probably fix this by, you know, creating some fabrication in the U.S., but that's too expensive. So we're not going to do that. They're just going to keep stealing our stuff. Now, they steal our DRAM. You know, that's one thing. DRAM, it's pretty bad. We need that. But I'll tell you what. I draw the line in the sand. When, if you ask me, you know, as a citizen, where's the line? Is it DRAM? No, it's not DRAM. It's aerospace components jesus christ we need our aerospace components and they're stealing them just the way that they're stealing our dram and we have indicted chinese hacker spies chinese hacker spies and conspiracy for stealing aerospace secrets now this is not a stock photo well it is but this is a turbo fan a turbine driven fan engine pretty cool technology and uh this guy right here that's what they're stealing. They're stealing our secrets. They want to make cool turbo fans. We just can't let it happen. I don't know what we're going to do about it, but we can't let it happen. So, turns out the, there was some, uh, you know, Chinese nationals working for various companies in the U.S. And I think there were some in Europe as well. They were installing viruses. They were copying stuff to USB drives. They were just, they were doing some shady stuff. And they're going away for a little while. Or a long while, actually. Is what I'm going to drink to the imprisonment of Chinese hacker spies. Well, one of the 2018, now that we're nearing the end of it, we're coming into the holiday season. And what has been the, the main idea of 2018? You could say immigration, and you could say gender. Gender has been a hot topic in 2018. The Trump administration has recently come out and uh, sort of said that they're going to introduce limitations, saying that there are two genders, and whatever you were born with, that's what you are. Which, weird that, you know, that's they make a rule for that, because... Uh, you know, in the in all of recorded history, that's how it's been. But now we need a rule. 
And so Amazon and Apple and Facebook and a bunch of companies. Let's just scroll down. Let's just look through this list. It is a huge list. Look at this. Apple, American Airlines, Amazon, Airbnb, Adobe, City, Google, Facebook, Intel. Look, everybody. Everybody. Pepsi. Not Pepsi. Everybody that's anybody has signed off and said... We don't agree, Mr. Trump. We don't agree that there are two genders and biology determines that. Which uh, all the big tech companies are in on this. Which is interesting because, you know, ones and zeros, tech companies should understand ones and zeros, right? But they don't. They think it's like something else. Who am I to say? I'm not a gender expert. I'm just a white male drinking straight from the bottle, which makes me, once again, the most dangerous thing in the universe and uh, the most ignorant, too, and the most oppressive. So I don't actually get a vote. Take a drink if you don't get a vote. Remember Vault 7? No, I'm not talking about Fallout. I'm talking about the data leak that was the uh, CIA's... uh, Treasure trove of hacks and classified data. Well, Joshua Shutt, shoot, was the man behind that, or so they claim. They've locked him up. But, unfortunately, locking him up did not silence him. He was able to get a hold of a mobile phone, or six, and continued to leak data from his uh, incarceration. They've discovered it. They're not happy about it. They're charging him with more crimes. Now, he claims that he's being tortured in, uh, in prison or jail or wherever he is. And he was leaking things about his case and saying that, you know, they were sort of not following the rule of law with his prosecution and his incarceration. But uh, they're saying that in doing so, he's going to get additional charges. So... He's going to have a bad time, I bet. Moving over to, I always put foreign news. You ever notice, like, I'll do all the U.S. stuff first, then I'll put the foreign news, because it's not as important. But talking about the U.K., they've announced a digital service tax on tech giants. Now, I believe this is if you have a billion in revenue or 50 million users. That's going to be 2%. But if you're making a billion dollars... 2% of that is a non-trivial number. So they're looking to take that. uh, UK is just on a warpath against big data and big tech. And they want their ounce of flesh. And they're going to get it. They can afford to pay it. Well, this article confused me at first. Because I read it and I was like, why is the Nintendo Switch tracking the citizens? It doesn't make any sense. Why would they do it? Then I realized that NSW stands for New South Wales, which is not the Nintendo Switch. It's much less exciting. But here's the thing. They're tracking their citizens. They got this camera system in place, and they're going to start using it. So if you're just, you know, you're running around chilling in New South Wales, camera sees you, it's going to search a passport database and an ID card. I don't know. I guess they got driver licenses or whatever voodoo they do over there for their bureaucracy but then there's going to be another layer which searches for crimes right like so if it sees you it's going to try to figure out if you're a criminal if you got any open warrants or stuff like that now a lot of people say that this is evil and orwellian and they're right it very much is but the government has assured them it's like don't worry listen it's fine we're only going to take action if that crime would result in three years or more in prison. <laughs> so if you have like some open jaywalking tickets, the SWAT team will not be dispatched. So you can rest easy. It's all good. Everything's good. I'm slowing down a little bit because I'm like, I'm about to finish this bottle. I didn't pace myself in this, but I'm going to take a drink for uh, citizens buying It's like small drinks. Well, I ran in China. I ran in China, recently made a discovery that the CIA had some spies 
you know, we talk about the Chinese spying. We talk a lot about that. And it's like, how dare the Chinese spy? Who do they think they are? Well, it turns out we spy too. Everybody spies. But the Chinese and, and the Iranians magically found out the identity of a bunch of our spies in their countries. And they killed them. Which is what you do. You know, you ever play a grand strategy game when a spy gets caught, they, uh, they pretty much just put them down. But how did they do this? How did they find them? Well, we finally learned they used Google. They used Google to do it. So they had a double agent. Those double agents, man. It's funny because, like, you know, all the fiction and stuff about espionage and double agents, and you're like, oh, man, that's far-fetched. It's not. This shit's really going down. So they had a double agent who they gave... Uh, one of the ways that they gave untrusted people to drop data back to them were these websites. So they would simply visit a website and they would use uh, URL parameters or something like that to drop information back to the CIA without being detected. Well, the Iranians got that double agent to give them the information and they simply searched for similar URL parameters on other websites and they found every drop point for all of the CIA agents. And in doing so, they were able to find the CIA agents. And then they killed them. So, oops. Maybe not the best system, CIA. Maybe time to rethink that. Well, that's it for government news. Let's take a, a, a small drink for government news being wrapped up. We're more than halfway home on this one, ladies and gentlemen, and far more than halfway through the bottle. Just a quick sip. Santa Margarita. I'm telling you, I'm enjoying the Santa Margarita. I could get wasted on Santa Margarita on a much more regular basis than I could the red stuff. Live and learn. So let's move on to security news. Intel CPUs fall to new hyper-threading exploit that pilfers crypto keys. This has a great name. It's called Port Smash. How great is Port Smash? So I tried to use Port Smash in a pickup line this weekend. I was like, hey girl, do you have two logical cores? Because I'd like to Port Smash. And she was like, listen, it's $100 and I don't do freaky shit, so... I don't think she got a joke. Yeah, stupid normies. But Port Smash, Port Smash is all about hyperthreading. So hyperthreading, if you're not hip to that, that's when you got two logical cores on a single physical core. And it's more efficient. You got that hyperthreading, it's great. But these researchers were able to compile this, uh, this, this program. And based on the timing that their program was able to perform functions, it's like, how long is this taking? They were able to pull the keys, the cryptographic keys, from the other logical CPU because they're on the same physical die. Now, this is not the same as Spectre and Meltdown, but it's similar. And you're probably not affected because you have to be in the system to be able to do this. Uh, they were able to do it over uh, SSH, I think, or SSL. And you got to get in there. You got to compile the software. It's not you can't do it with like JavaScript or something. So visiting websites is probably not going to do anything. But cloud services, you know, like Amazon, AWS, this is a real problem. Because if you're sharing a logical core with someone else and you have that access, you could pull the key from this. So, uh, similar to Spectre and Meltdown, you really just have to change the timing to defeat it. So there probably will be a fix, but just another. Uh, also, this affects uh, KB Lake and I think Cannon Lake, or at least that's what they've t tested so far. Sky Lake and KB Lake. So that's what they've tested, but they assume that uh, AMD's got the SMT, which is, you know, Hyperthreading is an Intel thing, but AMD's got SMT. They assume it would work the same if they did just change this a little bit. But they attacked Intel because, you know, it's more hip to attack Intel. So, yeah, if you're on the cloud, keep that in mind. 
And if you're not on the cloud, don't worry about it. Google. Now for a while, I, uh, I, you know, it's like you read all this news every week. And it, actually, it was before we ever started doing the news. But it's like you just JavaScript is fucking terrible, man. I mean, you don't want JavaScript. It is the ultimate security risk. But the entire web runs on it. So I was running NoScript for a while. I've gotten to the point now where my main browser is NoScript, but my secondary browser, I fall back to it constantly because most websites just will not work without JavaScript, which is unfortunate. And you can add one to the list, and that's Google. Google won't even let you sign in without JavaScript anymore. So they got these new security features. They're trying to prove that you're you and you're not trying to hack somebody's account, and it all uses JavaScript. So, yeah, if you're going to go in there, roll in there with a NoScript, you're going to see this message harsh which is funny because it's, they say it's a security thing but if you're really serious about security and you're blocking javascript you can't even use google kind of a catch-22 and maybe eclipsed by the port smash and with not as cool a name is bleeding bit a zero-day chip flaw now this one doesn't affect cpus or you know desktop cpus this affects Bluetooth chips that uh, are used. Uh, the biggest customer would be Cisco. And this is two flaws, one of which allows the, the firmware to be overwritten without confirming that it is a good firmware. Sort of a firmware update backdoor that they left in there. Not a good thing. And the other one is a, uh, a different kind of exploit. I've actually forgotten what the other exploit was. I've been drinking. So we're going to take a forgot what the other exploit was drink. But you got the one tab link. You can go read about it yourself. Uh, the problem here is if you're running Cisco, you, if you should check this out because uh, I'm sure they'll patch it, but it's real bad. It's remote execution. So not good at all. I think it was a buffer overflow. They could... Yeah, yeah, it was like a network discovery. You could send them a network discovery packet and then overflow the buffer and get into the memory and execute code. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Well, we talked about Iran murdering our spies. And to prove that we are attacking, well, not we, but we as in the Western coalition is attacking Iran just as much as they're attacking us in the spy game We've reported, or Iran has reported, a new computer virus more violent than Stuxnet. Now, if you don't know about Stuxnet, this was a industrial control module microcontroller virus. And what it would do is it would report nominal readings back to anybody who was inspecting. It's like, oh, how are the nuclear centrifuges doing today? Oh, they're doing fine. But in reality, they're not doing fine. They're close to over, you know, we're, we're going into meltdown. So this is a new version of that, more aggressive and harder to find, according to the Iranians. The Israeli government will not confirm or deny their involvement in this, <laughs> but it uh, seems like maybe they're involved. Iran's not allowed to have a nuclear program. Why? Because they're evil. You know, and it doesn't really make sense to me because our government's pretty evil. We get to have one. But they're not, so that's just the way it is, you know? Iran doesn't get nukes, and there are 26 genders. That's the world we live in. Don't question it. Let's take a don't question it drink. Mmm. Smooth. Oh, you know what? I screwed around and left two port smash stories in here. What was I thinking? Let's just revisit the idea of the port smash. Don't get your port smashed. That's the lesson of the day. And finally, I always like to, if you don't, so you notice like you start with good news. You always want to end. This is a pro tip. You know, if you want to do like a, a, a news YouTube show like this, you want to end on something that's kind of titillating. You know, and people will be like, oh, that's a little risque, right? So if you can talk about porn as the last story, you'd want to. 
And this is about a civil servant who watched porn at work and infected U.S. government network with malware. Now, this was like a weather station or a geological station or something like that. Uh, yeah, geolog USGS, U.S. Geological Survey. This guy had apparently been warned before about looking at the porn at work. And you know what he said to that? I don't care. I'm doing it anyway, bro. I need porn. And he got in faith. His laptop was infected with malware, a government issued laptop, his Android phone, malware, USB devices that he used to save the porn and take home, malware. He infected the whole network. I am often surprised at how easy people like people don't know where to get porn without malware. You know, that's you think if you were that into it, you would learn. But I think the problem is with this situation, it's similar to how uh, when you do abstinence-based sex education in schools, a lot more teenage girls get pregnant because it's, it's stupid. It's not realistic. Teenage people are not going to stop having sex because you tell them it's bad. It's an overwhelming biological urge. You know, you're not going to convince them not to. But if you give them like real world training in how to have safe sex and stuff like that, it's much more effective. I think the way we need to go, if you're the U.S. government, you know, you're not just like no looking at porn at work. Instead, you have workshops on how to look at porn safely at work. So probably not going to happen. But if I were the one dealing with this, that's what I would do to fix uh, this issue, the whole malware issue. And that's our last story, right at 30 minutes, which with me doing this by myself, listen, that's the best you're going to get. And uh, I want to dedicate this week's news to the humorless assholes who have already posted and who are like, it's asinine and childish to, get to drink and do stupid. I don't watch it if Wendell's not here. That's the people that this news is dedicated to. So tune in tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll be talking about business and uh, social media. A lot of social media stories this week. So yeah, I'll probably go ahead and power through the rest of this bottle and then we'll just coast through Friday. See you then. Mm -hmm.